Okay, hello YouTube. I'm going to be playing some anonymous chess, and uh, in these videos, or this video, I'm going to be exclusively playing h4 or h5. So, if you want to be like more familiar with this opening, you should probably watch this video. Now this is kind of cute, because sometimes people fall for a trap here, like they play e6 and they hang this bishop. So what I have here is like a King's Indian setup with h4 thrown in, but like h4 is not an unuseful move in the KID. So it's kind of a useful move to have thrown in, especially like with this bishop here, like there's situations where I can kick this bishop back and trap it. Well, that's annoying. He kind of left. He left the game. A lot of people, just to show you the trap, like a lot of people will play like e6 here, and then what you do is you play e4. And then when the bishop shuffles back to g6, you play h5 and you trap the bishop. But um, he left before we could see what his next move was. So we'll go ahead and claim victory and we'll go for a new opponent here and we'll try h5. So we'll see how h5 goes. So we've got h5. Oh, well, there, there's some potential here for, for maybe a similar, uh, this bishop on c4. We can do this tempo gain with like the Karo Khan. I'm not going to be able to utilize this to go after this bishop, but... In general, like when your pawns start getting planted on light squares, it's kind of useful um, if you can get rid of your light square bishop. So I'm very happy about that, taking back with the queen, because I do want this knight to go to c6. And now I have no problem just planting the rest of my pawns on light squares. And then this move is not going to be non-useful, but I want this knight to go to e7. So this is kind of similar to... Uh, it's like a queen's gambit declined reversed is what we're playing. So I'm going to start improving my position this way. I'm just going to go after his king, because like this looks really... See this battery I'm lining up here against this king? This is going to start looking really awkward for him in a minute. Because now I can play g5, and then I can... Oh, God. Yeah, it's all going to fall apart here pretty soon for him. Um. Yeah, I don't know how he defends this position anymore. I think I think it's all about to fall apart, and I think that's it. That's mate in two. So that's a shame. Yeah, he died pretty quickly. So I guess I'll have time for one more in this video, so that we can, you know, see a couple different exam. My opponent offers a draw. It's mate in one. You, you can just resign. That's more reasonable. I decline your draw offer. Are you going to resign or make a move? This is one of the issues I have with playing anonymously. You get a lot of rude people that like to play anonymously because they like to just be rude. You know, they like to let their uh, time run, let their flag fall because, you know, they don't want to admit that they lost or they don't want to resign. So, I don't know. I might just edit out, like, part of this video. <laughs> just fast forward to the part where he resigns because... or or his time runs out, because I'm not going to give him a, a even, even anonymously, I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of, of a draw just because he wants to wait. So, okay, he left the game, so now I can claim victory in 12 seconds. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, it's the same result, you know, regardless. So why why is he choosing to, I don't know, I guess at least they're playing anonymously. At least they're not, you know, putting a rating on it or something, but whatever. Okay, so we got time for one more. Um, so we're going to do h4 again, c5. So again, we're going to see like a king's Indian attack set up from white. Like we're going to see c3, d3, and then I'm going to do g3, uh, bishop g2. So this is kind of uh, one of the more difficult setups to face when they take kind of this king's Indian. Uh, like it's kind of like it's a king's Indian attack, but it's more like a king's Indian defense reversed is what you're playing here. And the main thing you want to do here is you want to keep the position closed. And another thing I try to do is I try to utilize this knight, like going to e2 instead of f3, so that I can gain a tempo with f4, f5 in the future. Another thing I have to be careful about is like attacks on this d3 pawn, because when they play d4, since I'm so far behind in development, I want to play c4. So that's one of the reasons why I want to throw on a move like a3, so that when he plays d4, I can play c4 without having to worry about knight b4. So he castles, and now this is where I have to debate between like knight f3 and knight e2. And both moves are actually pretty tempting. Uh, the downside... Seriously? He just resigned? He's not worse here. <laughs> this is frustrating. I was just explaining the position, and he's not hes not worse. You see, black is still better in this position. Like, if you look at the assessment, um, black is still better. And I got a lot of work to do. So I was going to do something like either knight f3 or knight e2. And um, yeah, I mean, he's still better... Probably knight f3 is the best move, like the way to go here. 
like D4. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he, he picked a pretty good line. You know, like D4, I was going to play C4. He picked a good line. Like, black has more space. Black has a slight advantage in this position. I don't understand why he resigned. Oh, well. Okay, so we'll play one more. One more to close out the video. Okay, so H5. Again, that is, that's one of the better lines. Okay, this is not one of the better lines, though. You don't really want to play F4 in these types of positions. Uh, C4 is a, a harder move to face. The, the issue here is, like, when I give up my light squared bishop, I'm going to end up with kind of a really nice position. Yeah, this is a big, big problem for him. Now he's going to have to move his king. Uh, yeah, this is already very, very dicey for for white. Uh, I'm just debating how to make his position significantly worse than it already is. Like, if this knight comes to f5, this could be very bad for him. It's a little frustrating that he's not completely lost here. But, I mean, he's close. I mean, queen f4. Um, it's almost resignable, right? So, like, now I have to debate how to come after his king, like, in the most efficient way. And, like, I'm really just thinking, like... Either bishop e2 or bishop d6. They both have merit. I think he's trying to run back with this king. So, like, I want to try to make him as much as possible uh, just regret that decision if he does go back. Um, I mean, he's finding some, some safety here. I mean, White White's position is still pretty clearly lost. Okay, that it just got worse, though. So, queen e4 check, and... Now, if king f4, I think bishop f4 is mate. So that's mate. So he should have blocked and then just lost a piece. But I think he was in denial. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of how you play h4 and h5. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the best systems against both of them are just kind of to push uh, the c-pawn, the d-pawn, and the e-pawn. Um, but not the uh, e-pawn. Like, if you just want to look at, like, the assessment here. Like, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, you know, moving the f-pawn can't be all that bad. But... Um, I'll just show you, like, the difference in assessment here with the engine. You know, so, of course, the engine is, is giving, you know, advantage white, which it should. I mean, I've done nothing in the middle of the board, and it's... But it's, look at the assessment drop here. Okay, I mean, it's not just a positional thing. There's also an, a huge assessment drop when white plays f4. Um, it, the position goes from, you know, this is major advantage white in this position if white plays correctly, because obviously I've wasted some serious tempo in the opening with h5 and c6. Uh... But as soon as you play pawn to f4, uh, this is a huge, huge, huge positional error, and black is already considered equal. So you go from, like, plus one point, I mean, it's a huge drop, you know, plus 1.6 to equality. So, like, I'm not claiming that h4 or h5 are, like, these super, like, spectacular first moves, but they're not as bad as they look. And uh, also, you, you have to play a uh, very, very correct chess uh, to not end up having some sort of uh, disadvantage. Like, something as small as uh, this positional mistake, bond f4, uh, can really kind of destroy your position. And I mean, really, just a few moves after this, uh, I was already better. So this is already advantage black in this position. So And then I didn't really let that advantage slip for the rest of the game. I kind of maintained that, that slight edge for the rest of the game. He didn't have much of a chance, and I turned the slight edge into a major advantage, and then it just kind of went from there. But anyways, that's kind of how you play h4 and h5, and I mean, I might be making a few more of these where I play anonymously and I play h4, h5. Uh, thank you very much for watching.